Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this week's Let's Talk Dairy. So today we're doing a little bit of, I suppose, background information on the industry. Uh, and I'm joined by Liam McCabe from uh, Borbia, who's a dairy specialist with Borbia. So in light of the fact that Borbia is sponsoring Bloom in the Phoenix Park today, we just said we'd pick up on, I suppose, the sustainability team around Irish dairy. And I suppose we talk a lot on, on, this, uh, on this medium here about the the actions that people have to take in terms of trying to get cows and calf, managing grass, etc. But there's a whole lot of work going on in the background, I suppose, in terms of selling the milk that you're producing. Uh, and Liam is part of a team that's involved in that. And I suppose, as I said, just in light of the fact that Borbia are sponsoring Bloom in the Phoenix Park this weekend, uh, I just said I talked to, to Borbia in relation to the way they work and the, and the angles that they have to take with uh, to try to market the milk that Irish uh, dairy is producing. And I suppose just put things in context for people because sometimes people think that there's a, a whole lot of, of rules and regulations being brought in and just making life difficult. But in reality, they're there for a reason. And Liam is going to kind of give us a little bit of an outline as to why that is the case. So Liam, I'll uh, hand over to you to tell us about the whole Bloom piece first, and then we'll have a, a bit of a chat in relation to the, the actual marketing piece that Borbia do for Irish dairy. Yeah, great, Stuart. Thanks very much for um for, for having me on. So yeah, yeah, Bloom is kicking off today. We're delighted to be back in the Phoenix Park after a two-year hiatus from the park, although we we had virtual blooms, they weren't quite the same as as the real thing. So it's our 16th year in, in the bloom or in, in the park this year. We're expecting it to be to be one of the biggest ever. In 2019, we had um, 119,000 visitors um, over the course of the five days. And this year, we have already sold close to 50,000 pre-sale tickets in advance. So um, we're, we're expecting it to be, uh, you know, a really big um, year this year and, and delighted it's, it it's, has kicked off this morning. So as soon as this is over, I'll, I'll be jumping in the in the car and, and away off up um, to it, Stuart. So, it, you know, I guess Bloom it's traditionally it's a you know it's a it's a flat, flat horticulture show in, in in theory but there is also a you know a big a large aspect in terms of um irish food and 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 giving food companies the opportunity to showcase what they do um and and to you know to give them the chance to actually sell some produce as well so that that's that's a big part of it as well so as i say really looking forward to to meeting people up there over the next few days yeah, so um, just like I suppose Bloom is very much in, about promoting the indigenous uh, production that it's occurring within the country, but we'll say Borbia, obviously then, while well, you're supporting that as well, your main role is obviously marketing f uh, food, Irish food produce across the, the world. Um, so what, uh, what, what, like, what are the big things that you need to use in terms of trying to get into market? So obviously we really ramped up our production within um, our, since the quota abolition, and like, but at the same time, we're still only a small player in the, in the global market, but we do seem to punch above our weight. And obviously you have a role to play in that. So what are the, the key things that are helping us to get, get the product out of the country, basically, considering we are, we're exporting 90 percent of what we're producing? Yeah, yeah. Um, a few, few questions in there, Stuart, but I'll, I'll, I'll try and answer as, as, as many. But look, yeah, I mean, we, we've. Our, our milk output has increased 55 percent since since 2014 um export dairy export value was valued at 5.1 billion last year for a second year in a row it, it exceeded um 5 billion and that was sent to a total of 147 countries so although you know fr from in terms of total european milk production we might be a small player but on the export stage you know we we, we as you rightly say we punch above our weight and we are, are a pretty significant player um you know obviously over 90 percent of our dairy is exported so that that essentially what that means regardless of where we go you know once you're an export orientated uh, nation you're going to be competing with someone um regardless of where you go so that 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 means that you need to be fit to show um you know what's your point of difference relative to your competitors so i, I guess that's that's where we we relate back to our sustainability credentials Stuart, and and you know it's it's really our production system here that 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 allows us to leverage our, our natural advantage and to 
you know, to demonstrate. It's all about demonstrating what are what are our unique selling points, and that's really around our sustainability messaging, our days at grass, um, you know, the efforts are, are, of Irish farmers to improve our, to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, to improve our biodiversity. You know, they're all all the real key callouts that we that we continue to reference, you know, and I, I think it's important that we don't lose sight of, of, you know, and it's something I would always reference of, of where the industry ha- has come to have grown by f- 50, you know, 55% since 2014 20, um, total, you know, milk output over 8, 8 billion litres to be fit, you know, that, that transformation it has been, you know, a significant achievement from the industry to actually handle that milk and have found really good markets for it over the over the past number of years as well so yeah like Liam you've you've mentioned there I will say our grass-based system okay so I suppose you look at the Dutch situation and they're now they've identified that this is a an advantage or key advantage point from from our perspective and they're trying to get into that space a small bit like no they're nothing like our grazing systems but they are they make very strong claims about it so in one sense, we have to keep ahead of them in that to, to maintain those markets because they could start to erode what we would have. Um, what kind of like the standards are increasing every year, and um, what what direction do you see it going in terms of uh, what advantages have you over that Dutch system? We'll say like uh, meadow milk is just one of the uh, the the names or the slogans yeah. that comes to mind. But we'll say all Irish milk is meadow milk, basically. Like so. Yeah. How do we how do we keep ourselves ahead of that kind of they're they're playing catch up now? Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. I I suppose Stuart, it's it's about being fit to back up back up the claims that 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 we're making, you know, and and I guess that's essentially uh, how Origin Green came about, and it's you know it's we're in the tenth year of Origin Green now, um, and and. It has sent, you know, I guess in, in the era pre Origin Green, it wasn't a case that we weren't talking about our unique production system. It was just that we recognized that there was a need to actually be fit to, you, you know, have evidence to substantiate our claims. And, and so, so that's really what's key for us is that we know, as you rightly call out, um, you know, our, our production system is totally different to the Netherlands. Um, you know, they're making claims that as as everyone does to try and position themselves as to you know as as uh to have unique selling points but absolutely it's essential that we stay we stay ahead especially when it's in terms of areas that we have a natural advantage in and and grass fed is absolutely one of them and i guess that was you know we obviously have our grass fed standard now which has been launched and rolled out across the industry um and and to a large you know, degree we've had the majority of the processes are 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 signed up and are grass fed verified at at this stage so it's really about um recognizing what our unique selling points are how can we capture data points that verify them and in turn how do we demonstrate those those you know what are the what's important from a customer perspective what do our customers want to hear what are the unique selling points is it is it days at grass is it the grass fed percentage you know and, and to actually harvest um, those key data points and and to turn them into into you know something in the marketplace that we can actually talk about. So again, coming back to the I suppose the putting the the background to the, the likes of the ASDS, which is the Sustainable Dairy Assurance Scheme, that's part of Orange Origin Green, and like people probably get uh, a bit excited about the audits coming up and so forth. That there's work to be done for them, but. That is a very, very important piece of the jigsaw from your perspective in terms of that verification piece of what we're actually doing on farm. And you can use that then uh, because it's Origin Green is the only kind of scheme in the world, basically, that can verify itself to the extent that we can do it here. But uh, we'll say, what would you say to people who'd be kind of drawing their eyes to heaven when we'd be talking about SDS maybe? like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look at the the, the, the farm the farm sustainability programs which is you know basically from a from a livestock perspective we're talking about the the SDAS from a dairy point of view and and the S blast the sustainable beef lamb and uh, beef and lamb assurance scheme so so they really are the cornerstone of origin green um Stuart you know I guess what origin green is it's an all-encompassing it's you know all-encompassing sustainability program right through the supply chain from farm level um producers 
being part of the SDAS to manufacturers having their own origin green sustainability plans and outlining tar- outlining targets as to how they're going to meet them. So it's the only ski, you know, standard at a national level, it, it, you know, of its kind in the world. So I think there's, it, it, it's really unique in that sense. SDAS has provided us with, you know, the, the essentially the data points, the proof points that we can actually talk about in market. And not only that, Stuart, and it, it's, it's an example that I, I have referenced in the past, and it's, it's, you know, a process I would have mentioned it, mentioned it to me, a couple of them, in fact, that, you know, in the past, when, when they would have been introduced to new customers, you know, and Asian customers in particular, did, did quite often have to go through a, a quite a strict audit, you know, a rigorous audit process for them to be fit to actually, you know, each individual customer may have their own audits that they would have to perform on, on, on new suppliers. But actually, um, you know, the SDAS is that well recognized at this point that that scene, you know, once you've SDAS, you're almost over the line to an extent in terms of the, the quality and sustainability of, of the product. So it's really provided the, the industry with, you um, you know, with those verif- verifiable proof points, um, it's given the custom, the end customers and our, and our consumers the reassurance that they're choosing the correct product when they're, when they're going with Irish dairy. Um, and that's really what it's about, Stuart. And I suppose from, from a farmer, from a farm perspective, we have over 16,000 members of the SDAS um, today, you know, that, that accounts for the vast, vast majority, I'd say, close to 100% of, of Irish dairy farmers at this point. Um, we fully appreciate the, the Irish farmers' commitment to the sustain, sustainable dairy assurance scheme, you know, as do, as do their processors. Um, and, you know, we, we, we will consistently look for, for ways to, to simplify that audit process for farmers. Um, obviously, you know, into the, the, the schemes were all developed knowing that, you know, we, there, there may be additions in terms of to meet whether it be market market customer demands or obligations as part of the climate action plan. The schemes are developed so that they're flexible and and you know there can be ad, things added where necessary or taken away if necessary. Um, to but I suppose what we are consistently trying to do is actually how can we simplify the audit process and we, we've seen during COVID how we were fit to you know to pivot to an online audit system and I think. A lot of farmers that engage with that that process, which you know, obviously it took. We we were in in periods of lockdown for over two years, so the vast majority of farmers would have went through an, an a remote audit at some stage. And in general, it was a positive experience for farmers. So there's certainly aspects of that that we would like to incorporate into the future, and and maybe to turn the focus of the audit more so on the, you know, the 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 actual on farm. Um, the on-farm elements of the audit, such as animal welfare and the things that we know farmers take great, great pride and care in. And, and if there's elements of the, you know, the paperwork, for instance, that we can maybe look at in advance of, of the on-farm piece or to actually try and simplify that for farmers, we'll, we'll try and use every opportunity um, to do that. Uh, and you were making the point when we were talking about this yesterday that uh, the concern that might be there about farmers' debt and so forth, but it's probably important to point out that the, we'll say releasing data in, in certain circumstances will obviously make people's life easier. So, so we're not saying that you're giving your data to everybody, but at the same time, the movement of data between some of the governmental agencies, we'll describe them as, will actually make people's life easier. So the likes of ICBF can feed uh, stock data, stock numbers through TE for to do. Um, the SDS will say to complete that, I suppose, maybe long term, there's all this talk of the fertilizer register coming in next year. Maybe is there scope for to bring the likes of that into, into the SDS as well, where they're trying to pick up on fertilizer. I presume you'd be looking at all those kind of avenues because people will be recording that information or to be being recorded somewhere. So rather than having to replicate it, we'll, yeah, you'd be looking abs- at all options. Absolutely, Stuart. It's something it's something that we, we recognize is that it's a big frustration of farmers is where they're being asked for the same data from multiple sources. So where we can streamline that, you know, and, and, and I think an obvious one might, you know, pasture base Ireland, for instance, where farmers are maybe recording when animals are housed and when they're when they're let let out again so you know that we certainly will try and simplify that process from a farmer's perspective to, so as that we can um take a bit of that burden off farmers that we're not you know that that they're not being asked for the same 
um, data from multiple sources. But you raised another important point there around the accuracy of that data, which is which is again extremely important. And that kind of feeds into the same thing as well, because you know farmers, as you say, can get frustrated when they're being asked for the same data on multiple occasions, and just you know whatever's off the top of their head can be put in. But but it's really important that you know we, we we've generated eighty thousand carbon feedback reports for, for Irish dairy farmers at this stage. But, you know, the, the accuracy of that information is, is totally dependent on the accuracy of the data that's fed in fed into them, you know. So so the the combination of data that generates a carbon feedback um or carbon footprint, sorry, is obviously your your um the, the data that you fill out in your sustainability survey. We we, you know, your your animal movement data. Um, we receive from the Department of Agriculture and your milk output data we receive from the from your from your cooperative. So that allows us to generate a carbon feed a carbon footprint for each individual farm. But as I say, that's all dependent on the accuracy of the data that's going in and going in in the first instance. And as well, so we will also look to do, and it'll be in conjunction with yourselves, Stuart and Chagas, is to try and you know where we can as as new research comes on stream, how can we actually improve the accuracy of the model itself by incorporating new research. I know there would have been a revamp, um, you know, late last year for some of your colleagues would have, would have fed into some of the research that's going on in Chagas would have informed the carbon footprint model and would have allowed it to become more, more, more accurate. And that's again, something that we will look to do into the future. And I suppose in, in the hope that those um, additions may be factored into the, to the, to the national in, inventories um as well yeah, so, so basically what we're working on in Chagas is to put irish data together to support what is international kind of figures currently being used and replace the international figures then with irish data so obviously because of the system that we run it can vary compared to maybe how systems in in on the continent or whatever so adjusting that data obviously helps to, us to improve and i i think if i'm i'm correct probably for one of the processors that I would deal with here in the South anyway, I know that carbon footprint dropped by about 0 0.1 with the updates that came in. And a lot of that was driven by, uh, I would say, just research around protected urea emissions factors and slurry and urine emission factors as well, that when they were changed, we actually found that we had a lower footprint. So that, that actually strengthens your case. Then, Liam, obviously going to the European markets or international markets as well. What else do they look for or what else are they beginning to ask more and more about um, your, the customers that you're talking to? Or the, yeah, the, yeah. The, I mean, to... look, at it, it's, you know, to be straight up, it's it's the number one topic of conversation with them all, Stuart, is is, is sustainability, you know. Um, and I know we, we would have spoke briefly offline about how, there, you know, there, there, there can at the minute with all the you know the issues that we're seeing in terms of global supply chains across the world as as you know as a result of the obviously covid but the escalated through the war in ukraine as well how there's a you know there, there seems to be you can hear some talk around well you know that sustainability has been kind of pushed down the ladder a little bit and it's been trumped by you know food availability or whatever and that's you know obviously people need to feed themselves so that's obviously the, num the number one concern but Absolutely, from the conversations we've been having with our, you know, the large dairy blue chip customers, sustainability is still up there on the agenda, you know, and I guess the, the, their number one concern and is is really around how can we improve our, um, you know, how can we improve our carbon footprint per per kg of product. Um, Stuart and, and and another you know biodiversity is also a, going to be a really big one because it's it's something that is quite relatable back to consumers um you know and we even see it here in Ireland it's it's, it's quite a hot topic and that's that's pretty consistent um across Europe that biodiversity is something that's very relatable back to consumers it's something that you know our customers can very easily talk to their customers about so it's going to be um you know it's going to be going to be increasingly important into the future and i think you know it's 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 important to say as well that that we'll be supporting farmers in in that transition and i i know chagas will too and we you know through the whether it be through the sign pros program or, or whatever you know we, we will be supporting farmers through the sustainable dairy assurance scheme in terms of making that transition over to more um you know whether it's taking more biodiversity friendly actions or just transitioning to more sustainable food systems in general um, you know, we'll support farmers wherever we can in, in making that transition.
Yeah, and one of the other items that you mentioned, of course, was water quality is 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 very much like while well, greenhouse gas emissions and so forth are important. It seems that water quality uh, is very high on the agenda with all of the the blue chip companies yeah. you described them as. Yeah, 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 and and it's it's fair to say too, Stuart, that you know they're all impressed with the strides Irish farmers are making. You know, anytime we talk to a customer about the you know the 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 Mac measures and the signpost program, they're all you know. It, it it's very and I think we sometimes lose sight sight of that in terms of because you know we're obviously working in a our own vacuum here in Ireland but you know there has been lots of positive strides made obviously there's big improvements needed and 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 we know that farmers are very up up for that challenge um but of course you know and it's the focus of us is to look at well what are the what is the research saying in terms of our own unique production system and that's all that's that's what we'll talk to to our customers about but you're absolutely right the water quality is is another big one okay so i suppose just to that that mac curve is is something that they're really engaging with from what you were saying as well yesterday um so we really should be trying to implement as much of that as possible as quickly as possible especially given the targets under the food vision um reports and so forth and the objectives will say the carbon budgets now that we have as well. Uh, there's some major savings need to be made, but there are actually some big, big steps that can be taken that will save a lot of that carbon very quickly. And we just need to implement them an awful lot quicker. So um, we'll probably come back to the, the MAC curve another day, I think. In, um, but I suppose one of the big steps there is the protected urea in particular for us. We can save nearly a million tonnes of our carbon if we implement that very, very quickly. So... Um, of kind of a three million target. So the Mac, Mac curve, well, it look, it's been updated and revamped again now currently. Um, but a lot of those uh, are ticking the boxes for ye from the point of view of what your suppliers are looking for in terms of that reduction in carbon footprint, really, is it? Yeah, absolutely, Stuart. It's about achieving that um shared goal of of you know of of trying to improve our um our our carbon footprint and, and improve sustainability in general you know and I, I think it just just to mention as well a couple of uh, a couple of new initiatives that we have recent recently launched in the last kind of in the last 12 months um we we have launched our farm sustainability learning hub which is essentially a place for farmers to go if they want to upscale on sustainability um we've had 2000 farmers registered to date and it's something we will be continue as opposed to it how, how it came about Stuart was that from any of the research we've done on farmers we hear back the farmers are actually keen to learn and to understand how they can improve their, their sustainability and to learn more about sustainability in general so th there's a there's a useful resource there and I know um, the Chagas advisors would be engaging with it as well um, you know, so so that's a that's a useful re resources for farmers that if they don't if they're if they feel a bit at lost with in terms of sustainability that there's they, they have a place to go um to to you know to understand the fundamentals. And that's basically we'll say available twenty four seven. So if people anytime people, rather than you know, maybe they can't attend a meeting that we're doing or whatever on it, that information piece is there just to kind of give you the basic building blocks of what sustainability is about. And people yeah. can go through that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's open, Stuart, to all all our mem all members of the beef Lammer dairy quality or Ass quality assurance scheme. So, um, and look at it's something we'll be we'll be pushing. You know, we'll be rolling out in conjunction with with yourselves and with the Irish dairy other Irish dairy processors over the next few months. Um, but yeah, it as you say, it's it's open to all farmers. They can they can log on if they have the herd number. They'll they'll. Um, if they're not familiar with logging on to our farmers portal or if they don't know their pin they can just they can submit and look for a new one and it'll be text on to their to their phone um, and that'll give them access very good so i think i better let you go get in the car and head for bloom uh, so thanks for coming on i suppose as i said i just wanted to give people a bit of context i suppose there's a, a lot of moving parts in the irish dairy industry and, and while the, the the whole thing that is underpinned by the cows on the ground producing the milk there's a lot of work has to go on in terms of moving that product out of the country. And as I said, you're you're involved quite significantly in that. And just to give people a flavor of it really is it was what I wanted to do today. So I hope people got some value from that today. Um, wish you well for the bank holiday weekend. And again, wish people to uh, a good, safe bank holiday weekend as well, because still plenty of silage going on. That's done in the last week. You know, huge credit due to contractors for the amount of work that they've gotten through in the last couple of days. 
um, and hopefully everybody will have a nice bank holiday and, and be safe. And we'll be back again next week to talk about um, managing milk recording, we'll say, and uh, how you're going to deal with problem cows at this stage of the year. So I look forward to talking to you next week. And thanks again, Liam, and take care, everyone. Thanks very much, Stuart.